Hey guys, it's me, Mr. Sawatsky. Check out the hall from my 1920s picture. Well, okay, so maybe it's not me. It doesn't even look like me. And I'm glad it's not me, because now I'd be dead. But you can see what cars might have looked like, at least really nice cars back in the 1920s, um, even here with his own chauffeur driver. Now let's take a look at me in the 1930s. Hmm, interesting. Looks like something's changed. Take a look over here. At what it says on the sign. A hundred hours will buy this car. Must have cash. Lost all on the stock market. So things went from here to here really quickly. And lots of people like to be able to blame the stock market and the crash of October 1929. Um, but really that's not the only cause of the Great Depression. It's really just a starting point. So if you really want to blame somebody for the stock market, blame this guy over here. Actually, I kind of feel sorry for him when you stop and look at it. According to this, it says he put all of his life savings in the bank on October 28th, 1929, otherwise known as Black Tuesday. And if that were true, that would mean that he did that here, and then that would be bad because he lost it there. But what would be even worse is if he invested all of his money back here in April of 1929, and then he held on to it all the way till November 11th of 1929. But this is a substantial decrease, as you can imagine. Um, and we do feel sorry for this kid um, for a number of reasons. And, again, that date, October 28th, 1929, is what we now call Black Tuesday, or the day of the stock market crash of 1929. Now, Tuesday seems to be a big day around here because tomorrow, or Tuesday, we will be having our Super Tuesday election. So a moment for that as we look at two lovely pictures of two of the contenders for the presidency. Donald Trump here with his hair and Bernie Sanders here. And I know you're thinking, what would it look like if somehow him and him could be merged, at least in terms of their hair? Apparently that's what would happen. But all right, let's go back to our friend here. I'm going to teach you in a moment how you can get rich on the stock market. It's a, it's a perfect recipe. It really can't go wrong, um, except here for this guy. But before we do, we're going to take a commercial break with some Grey Poupon. The finer things in life. Happily, some are affordable, like Grey Poupon Dijon mustard. Grey Poupon is so fine, it's even made with white wine. It's Pokemon! A Dijon recipe adds distinctive flavor to beef, pork, and poultry, salad dressing and sauces, and of course, sandwiches. So enjoy one of life's finer pleasures. Pardon me! Would you have any Grey Poupon? But of course, Grey Poupon, one of life's finer pleasures. Okay, thank you for that commercial message. Now, these guys probably would have been passing some Grey Poupon back and forth in the 1920s, not so much in the 1930s. And this guy looks like he's had too much Grey Poupon. Don't even get me started. Okay, now, back to getting you rich. Whoa, what was that? I'm seeing things now. So if you want to get truly rich, here's what you do. You buy stocks when they're as low as possible. Now this would be a good starting point, but this is even better down here when stocks are at their lowest. Now this is kind of confusing, but it's kind of a combination of different stocks. But you can just picture this even as just one stock um, to make it more simple. So you want to buy when it's down here at about 40, and you want to sell when it gets really high. And showing you how to do that over here, you'd want to buy in 1926. And then you'd want to sell, I don't know, in September of 1929 before everything goes bad. So there you have it. I don't know why you're still in school. You could all become day traders and get very wealthy quickly. I'm teaching you how to do this. If you look closely, there's a subliminal message on how to do that. But of course, if we could all know when the thing goes up, or better yet, when it goes down, we could all be rich, even Mr. Sawatsky and this guy. But we don't know. The prices move up and down, and we're not always sure what's going to happen. Now, when we look at the stock market crash of 1929, I want you to realize it is not, in fact, even the worst percentage loss of any, of any one day in the stock market. That would go to October 19, 1987, as you see right here, when the stock market lost almost 23% of its value in one day. But if you look here on October 29th or 28th into 29th, there's a substantial loss there, followed by another substantial loss in 1931. 
Seems to me that October might not be the best time to get involved in the stock market. I mean, you can see the slide right here where stocks were trading on an average of $386.10 at its height. And it's kind of hard to see, but by 1933, it was down to $40 per share. That's a, a reducement. Is that a word? That's a reduction of about 80% or more of its value. You might want to check my math on that. But if you want to look at it this way, it's like going from being this really big dog to this little dog. And this what was, is what was happening across the country. Now, I've given you a really simplified version of the stock market, so I'm now going to show you a little bit more detail. Okay, so I found this Powtoon on YouTube, and it's a pretty good job. I'm going to talk over it a little bit. First, got to get it started. It's got some cool Billy Joel background music. And that's important. It's the beginning of the Great Depression, although there were signs for it beforehand. It's kind of like saying World War II started in September of 1939, but there were things in place before that that kind of gave us some hints that it was going to happen, like Hitler's expansion. You'll see this in class when we look at economic charts. It's upward trends for most of the 1920s until 1929, when sadness occurs. There were problems, but people chose to ignore them. Maybe kind of like with Hitler and his expansion, or the Japanese expansion. Lots of people were in debt, banks were in debt, the farms were struggling, low wages all around, and people were spending too much money. And when people start selling stocks, other people start selling stocks. And when that happens, the prices go down and everybody kind of gets hurt. It's kind of a bit of a panic. Back then they had something called Doodle instead of Google. Why is it important? So one of the things that happens after the stock market crash is more rules and regulations are put into place to try to prevent this from happening again. This was a financial tragedy. Fast forward. Oh, not sure what happened there. Sorry about that. Well, it wasn't a mistake if they sold in October or before October 1929. And when the banks close, that makes things even more difficult. I'm not really sure why they put Billy Joel's Piano Man with this, but... Whatever. Oh, now there's a girl typing. She's typing fast. And that's true. After the stock market crash, they started creating these rules and regulations to monitor it a little bit closer. Using Powtoon. Okay. Okay, thank you, YouTube and Powtoons, for that. Let's go back to looking at some primary documents from back then, all the way back in the 1920. Wait a minute. This says 1987. So there's been more than one crash. And again, this was on a Tuesday and it was October. So those are bad days to invest. Stocks plunged 508 points, the record drop that I mentioned before. People like to use the word panic anytime there's something going on with the stock market, any kind of crash. Um, panic, crash, those sorts of things. 
Ironically, um, the person who created the term of the Depression, by the way, was Herbert Hoover, which we'll find out about in class. This one is related to the one in October of 1929, as is this one. Now, you still start to see these moments of panic lately when Chinese, the Chinese stock market, as in this year of 2016, have had some problems. And speaking of, I've got some breaking news for you. I didn't get a chance to share this in class, but congratulations, America. We are now $19 trillion in debt. Everybody applaud. Yeah, that's not a good thing. And you'll notice that these candidates running for president, they don't like to talk about it so much because of the big effect it has. Speaking of an effect, we're going to take a look at what effect the stock market had on individual people. All right, so this is Herbert Hoover I just mentioned. He's the president. In his inaugural speech, he says that all sorts of things are great in the United States in terms of economics, that poverty was about to be eliminated, and things couldn't be better for our economy. He said this when he was inaugurated in January of 1929. Um, within a year, America will be plunged into the Great Depression. Let's take a look at what he says. The president promised blue skies in the country's future. At his inauguration in 1929, Herbert Hoover repeated the common wisdom of the day that Americans were on their way to riches. If proof was needed, all one had to do was look at the bubbling pool of wealth, the stock market. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, everybody, oddly enough, was in the stock market. One of our chauffeurs was in the market. <laughs> If he can be in the market, anybody. Well, that must have been me back then, the guy with the chauffeur. So with no regulations as we have now, people got away with murder all the time. The government didn't bother them. So they were all making money. They were doing very well. A boom in buying had driven up stock prices. Suddenly, in October of 1929, investors started cashing in their overpriced stock. And when they cash in, the and prices go down. Started. On October 29, 1929, it was obvious from the opening bell that uh, things were wildly uh, amiss. At uh, 9.30, there was a, a, a rumble in the, on the floor. One of the papers said, hey, Mike, Look at the, the sell orders coming out of those phones. The wheels really started to come off. The stock market went into a free fall. Crowds gathered in the street outside of the exchange. No, at three o'clock, the bell rang and that was it. More than $30 billion in paper value simply vanished that day as the stock market crashed. The famous word, the crash. Overnight, it was like bomb spell. The 20s bubble had burst, and with it, the decade's optimism. People lost every penny that they had. Nobody had any pensions. Uh, there were no, there, there was no Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. Uh, if people lost their money, that was it. They were down and out. People jumped off the George Washington Bridge, which had only just then, not long ago, been built. People we knew. My father was wiped out. He never, psychologically, he never recovered. At 29, I lost a million dollars. What do you do? The same story. Wash your face and hands and comb your hair and start all over again. But as people would find out in the decade to come, a decade is different from the 20s as night is from day. Starting over was not going to be so easy. And I really like I really like what he said there about the 20s and the 30s being as different as night is from day, which is what we'll see with our projects in class, or at least some people think that's the case. Well, here's the stock market in the 1920s doing quite well. Here's some of those same people about five years later when things weren't so great. 
And this guy, Herbert Hoover, gets blamed for everything. Was it fair? Probably not. Gotta go. GTG, bye.